Monday, November 15, 2021. Good evening, televiewers. It is another edition of the 6 p.m. English News over the Republican television. Let's begin right away with our major stories. A traditional group known as Nganya was attacked in the early hours of this Monday in Boya, southwest region of the country. Sources say two persons were killed and one died at the spot. To enable the government to better use the cryptocurrency methods for the sustainable development of the country, the Ministry of Post and Telecommunication has organized a workshop to discuss the risks and opportunities of cryptocurrency in Cameroon. The indomitable lions of Cameroon will be competing with the elephants of Cote d'Ivoire tomorrow at the Japoma Stadium in Douala in the last Group G2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers. Those were our headlines. We'll be right back. As you heard in one of our lead stories, it is another Black Friday, Black Monday in Boya. We begin with this cover shot where a traditional group known as Nganya was attacked in the early hours of this Monday morning in Boya, southwest region. Sources say a car stopped and rained bullets on the group, which hit two persons. One died at a Boya Regional Hospital and the other in a stable state as at now. After the incident, the military used force to take the cops, and, <clears throat> and the angry Inyanga group are out to take the cops and perform their rights before barrier. Let's now listen to the mayor of the Boya Council Bar, David Mafanyi, speaking shortly after the sad incident, carefully selected by our Southwest correspondent, Ekema Njoku. Uh -huh. Roundtable conference, calling for peace, calling for understanding, calling for support. Yes, uh, may I start by expressing my condolences to the bereaved family and praying that may the soul of uh, our brother rest in the bosom of our Lord. Um, the situation is quite an unfortunate one because this is a young man who was so dedicated to the unity and oneness of this country. I can remember just last week during the peace march, he was one of the main architects and um, what has happened has happened. But you know, that has happened and um, we cannot let things to go out of hand so that those who don't want Boya to be in peace should take advantage of this situation. We understand the anger in the population, but um, we're thankful that um, we have chatted with chat away because I called for a crisis meeting with the chiefs and my deputies and um, some other community leaders in the morning and we decided to first of all go and visit the very family and uh, we got in touch with the administration, invited them to the town hall which is the council because that is the soul of the town and I'm thankful to God they accepted the um, legion commander, the DO and many other security and authorities all came. We have accepted the cops. Part of the anger was that the cops of the young man was taken from the legislation to the mortuary and being somebody who is um, of a very high standing in a secret society, that goes against the tradition. We have resolved that the cops will be handed to the secret society and we as a people, the council will stand behind them to see to it that everything is done as required in the tradition. We want to say we're thankful to the population of Boya for having managed their anger and annoyance. We know these things we don't pray for, we don't plan for, but when they come we have to manage them because it could have been worse than this. But we at the same time want to pray that um, the forces of law and order we try and um, exercise some restraint when they meet the population. We understand that they are working in a stressful and difficult situation. We will have to harness our efforts so that peace should be um, a matter of um, reality in that town. At the same time, we are not against any person. We beg of our youths that have expressed their anger. We beg of them to calm down, not to go overboard. Um, 
this has happened is unfortunate. We pray God that it doesn't repeat itself. We continue with this sad story in the west region of the country where a student of the Martin Luther Secondary School was stabbed by his classmate on the back as he tried to escape after failure to separate a fight. Thanks to quick intervention, he was rushed to the hospital and is responding to treatment. We have details with an Omeko. School shirt completely stained with blood, fresh blood on this lady's handbag, payment of trezors, a good Samaritan who almost lost his life in an attempt to separate classmates fighting after school. A two-day problem that ends bloody due to misunderstanding. When it started, the person in charge of interclasses asked Watu to stand at the gate and control those entering the field. Just putting the mayor uh, in the conditions of uh, leading the councils uh, to, to lead human resources and material resources and also to know what are the rules and regulations that are applicable, that, are, that can be applied to the councils, uh, whether it's related to uh, human resources, material resources, and, and so on. It's also about the uh, financial regime uh, that's applicable to the councils. And so on. So this training is very important for them, for, for them to get acquainted to all the rules and regulations to be applied to the councils. The mayors, for their part, already know a few things in the exercise of their missions when it comes to decentralization and local development. In line with this training, Every mayor is supposed to be very municipal magistrate. He is supposed to know what the law commands, what is permitted and what is not authorized. That is, as a whole, the expectations of this seminar. I would like to sincerely thank the ministry for organizing this seminar to reinforce capacities of municipal magistrates who arrived at a point because it's 
has been a question. Accelerating decentralization and local development concerns not only the Cameroonian government but also the authorities of the decentralized territorial communities as well as the population. It is to this regard that this seminar was organized to strengthen the capacities of the municipal executives of the Benu Division of the North Region. The Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation has hosted a five-day working meeting with the Integrated Regulatory Review Service follow-up mission of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The aim of this meeting is for experts in the field of nuclear safety to review radio protection infrastructures in Cameroon. We have details in the following report. With the objective to review the radio protection infrastructure in Cameroon, the Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation has this Monday, November 15th, hosted the Integrated Regulatory Review Service follow-up mission of the International Atomic Energy Agency. The meeting has come to respond to Cameroon's request in 2018, which was made through the National Agency for Radio Protection. Cameroon has requested that we have a follow-up mission uh, now to review its regulatory infrastructure. And of course, it's part of their endeavor to continually improve and, and, and to, to meet their objective. And, and we noted one uh, very important progress made by Cameroon recently was the promulgation of a new legislation, which has significantly reinforced the regulatory infrastructure. And for sure, during the week, our team, the IEA, will review, right, will make a constant review of the situation and will definitely submit this report to the uh, INRP the regulatory body in Cameroon for, for necessary action. It is a question for these experts in the field of nuclear safety to review the country's progress in response to the recommendations and suggestions made during the second integrated regulatory review service mission to Cameroon in October 2014. The radiological on nuclear safety, nuclear security, civil liability, and safeguard enforcement has realized at least 80% of the recommendation made to the government. However, we need we need to uh, the, the the application decree of this law to have the recommendation made to the National Radiation Protection Agency realized. Instructed by the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, through the Ministry of Scientific Research and Innovation, it is a five day of working session with these experts of nuclear safety in order to come out with assessments and observations. The Ministry of Post and Telecommunication has this Monday, November 15th, organized a workshop on the stakes, opportunities, and risks of cryptocurrency in Cameroon. A seminar largely attended by experts of cryptocurrency, it was an opportunity to enable the government to better use this method for the sustainable development of the country. And Umeko was part of this workshop and brought back the following report. Adding to the other means of financial transactions, Cameroon joins the train to facilitate online buying, accepted for trading by many companies, and also completely under the control of central balance, referred to as cryptocurrency. Objective of a workshop organized at the conference hall of the ancillary building of the Ministry of Post and Telecommunications, Monday, November 15, 2021, with experts to better explain what cryptocurrency is. Cryptocurrency is a consequence of innovation in the digital world. We cannot avoid, we cannot uh, forbid this uh, activity in Cameroon. So what your government is doing, we want to hear about experts. What is cryptocurrency? How is working? What are the risks? And how we can protect our consumer? A system of financial transactions, though advantageous and less stressful, has its stakes. Something that is virtual, which you cannot see, is difficult to put the value on it. 
and there's people that can be able to put value on something. The first people that put value for people within a country is the government. So if the government says, I cannot determine the value, and you go ahead, it's a risk for you. And once you take that risk, you have no one to blame, you have no insurance, you have nobody to go to. Because cryptocurrencies are not backed by any bank or central banks or any other issuing authorities. The government still needs to boost the sector, make it more active and void of challenges. Sandboxing is when you bring all the experts and you take a certain number of services to experiment them. You experiment to see, to have a feel of the risk itself. Because certain risks look theoretical. When you run them, then you see the risk itself. And then you can reduce those risks and then open out that service to the, whole, to, the, to the whole economy. So it's about going piecemeal, bit by bit, avoiding all the risk. A developed digital economy system, very common in some African countries like Ghana, Nigeria and many others. A system with greater opportunities if well managed guarantees a better future. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, you're watching the 6 p.m. English news over the Republican television. Let's now talk sports. We're under the supervision of the General Delegate for National Security, Martin Barga Ngele. The 2021 National Security Inter-Service Football Tournament is underway in Cameroon. The official kickoff was on Saturday, November 13, 2021. Betran Tata was part and brought back the following report. The kick-up of the maiden edition of the National Security Inter-Service Football Tournament was given on Saturday, 13 November 2021 by the Secretary General at the General Delegation for National Security, Police Commissioner Bayer Dominique, personal representative of the Delegate General for National Security, Martin Bangangeli. In the cutting razor of the competition that will run till the 11th of December 2021 with 16 teams divided into four groups, the National Security 2 humbled their opponent, National Security 1, by eight goals to one, giving joy to their fans and supporters. The team captain of National Security 2 was not carried away with the flamboyant victory of the day. I'm very grateful for the match for today, in particular for my team as a whole, because as a team we can work. We can, you cannot play football alone, so as a team we can work. So I'm so grateful for everybody. For the scores, it was very good. 8-1 is not a, a clown victory, so I'm very, I'm very glad, I'm very excited for, for my equipe. Our aim is not just to win the match, but to go and take the, 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 the cup. Also present on the VIP stand at the opening ceremony was the president of the National Olympic and Sports Committee, Hamad Kalkaba Marbum, Cameroon's roving ambassador, Albert Roger Miller, and former indomitable Lions captain, Rongobe Song Bahana, who came to show solidarity with the policemen and women who risk their lives on a daily basis to protect the lives and properties of Cameroonians while also ensuring a fluid circulation in our cities. Cognizant of the fact that sport is a vector of cohesion, professionals and considering the future challenges on the field, close to 400 these men and women marched from the governor's office through some major streets in Yaoundé earlier on Saturday morning. Led by the police ban, they passed through the Longkak roundabout, Bastos, Tinga, before concluding with same exercise at the governor's office explanates. Still in sports, the indomitable Lions of Cameroon will be competing with the Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire tomorrow at the Japoma Stadium in Douala in the last Group G 2022 FIFA World Cup qualifiers game. With both teams separated by just one point, victory is imperative for Cameroon, while a draw can do for Cote d'Ivoire, as you tell us in the following report, Betran Tita. 
The Indomitable Lions will be on revenge mission when they take on the Elephants of Côte d'Ivoire at the Japuma Stadium this Tuesday, 16th November 2021 in the nation's economic capital, Douala. After suffering a two goals to one defeat to the Elephants on September 6th in Abidjan, the Indomitable Lions are poised to win this Tuesday, savour their revenge on their arch enemies who also come with the ambition to spoil the party for Cameroon in their own backyard. To set up the exciting fixture set up for this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Cameroon time, the Indomitable Lions of Cameroon fired warning shots on the elephants on Saturday when they quenched the flames of Malawi with a 4 0 sparkling at the Orlando Stadium in Johannesburg, South Africa. The elephants replied same Saturday night by trashing the members of Mozambique by three goals to nil and taking back the driver's seat in Group G with 13 points. Second seated Cameroon with 12 points must therefore avoid any mistake and take all three points if they are. And on to news out of the country, over a thousand Tunisians gathered on Sunday near the country's parliament to protest a presidential power grab they deemed a coup. We have details with Ruth Fonio. Over 1,000 Tunisians gathered on Sunday near the country's parliament to protest a presidential power grab they deemed a coup. It was the latest rally opposing President Kai Saeed's July 25th decision to sack the government, suspend parliament and seize an array of powers, citing an imminent threat to the country, birthplace of the Arab Spring uprising against autocracy. A protester, Ida Mohamed said, We have come together to peacefully say the president, no to dictatorship, no to individual rule. We must go back to the constitution that made you. Protesters shouted, The people want to bring down the coup d'etat and branded the president an agent of colonialism. A member of the organization Citizens Against the Coup said Jean Duby expressed his disappointment about the current state of governance. We are in 2021 and we are expressing a coup, a real military and police coup. On September 22, Said suspended part of the constitution and installed rule by decree, maintaining full control of the judiciary as well as powers to sack ministers and issue laws. He appointed a new government in October with Naishla Boudin as the North African country's first female prime minister. Said, who was elected in late 2019, made his move and a socio-economic crisis aggravated by the COVID-19 pandemic. Some of his opponents have accused him of seeking a new dictatorship. A decade after Tunisia's 2011 uprising that overthrew dictator Zing El Abidin Ben Ali, but the president's supporters say his moves were needed. After after years of impasse among political parties seen as corrupt and self-saving. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of our 6 p.m. English news. But before we leave you, a recap of our major points. A traditional group known as Nganya was attacked in the early hours of this Monday in Boya, southwest region of the country. Sources say two persons were shot and one died at the spot. To enable the government to better use the cryptocurrency method for the sustainable development of the country, the Ministry of Post and Telecommunication has organized a workshop to discuss the risks and opportunities of cryptocurrency in Cameroon. The Indomitable Lions of Cameroon will be competing with the Elephants of Cote d'Ivoire tomorrow at the Japoma Stadium in Douala in the last Group G 2022 FIFA World Cup Qualifiers Games. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Desiree Trezon Bonnet at exactly 8 p.m. for news in the French language. But until then, do stay tuned to interesting programs over at Camdis Television. Do have a wonderful evening. Thank you.